Hi friends, in this video, I would like to discuss about some clinical examination of hip joint. Coming to the clinical examination of hip joint, this is Drummond sign in which we are doing the flexion of hip and knee. Whenever we do the flexion of hip and knee, there is an increasing external rotation means it's suggestive of pathological disorder of hip. Just like a please scratch test of shoulder joint to rule out whether there is any pathology associated with shoulder joint, just like that a please scratch test, we can do Drummond sign in hip joint to check whether there is any pathology related to hip joint. Coming to the inspection, please note the skin, bone, and then gait. Regarding bone, we should check and compare the length to the contralateral side. Coming to palpation, we should palpate greater trochanter to check whether there is bursitis or whether there is napping iliotibial band. The commonest site of pain of iliotibial band is distally at the lateral condyle of femur, just proximal to two centimeter of lateral joint line of knee joint but there is a chance of snapping iliotibial band at the greater trochanter also. Coming to the next bony landmarks, check anterior superior iliac spine to check whether there is sartorial avulsion and ischial tuberosity to check whether there is hamstring avulsions and then check iliotibial band. Coming to the range of motion of hip, all of us know, hip is the second largest joint of our body, second to knee joint. And regarding ROM, hip is second to shoulder joint in the mobility also. These are the normal range of motion of hip joint. And coming to Trendelenburg sign, which is affected in abductor weakness. And in abductor weakness, here we can see whenever the patient raise the left leg, we can see on the weight bearing side, there is a hip drop on the weight bearing side. But in Trendelenburg sign positive means here you can see the patient's left leg is raised at that time whenever there is drop on the same side. That means drop, hip drop on the contralateral side of weight bearing joint means Trendelenburg sign is positive. Here in this particular patient, the right side hip abductor is weak. This is Trendelenburg sign which is positive in hip abductor weakness. Coming to Thomas test, which is positive in fixed flexion deformity of hip. Here you can see the right hip is flexed up to normal. Whenever there is a rise of left lower limb from the couch, that means there is fixed flexion deformity of the left hip. This is Thomas test. Coming to the next one, it's flexion adduction and internal rotation which is more suggestive than Faber test flexion, abduction and external rotation in hip pathology. Here, if flexion, adduction and internal rotation positive means it may be, there may be a chance of labral tear or femoroacetabular impeachment. Coming to the next clinical examination, first one is Nilatown's line from the ischial tuberosity, a line is drawn to anterior superior iliac spine. It should pass through the greater trochanter. In neck of femur fracture, the greater trochanter is proximally displaced, so the greater trochanter is above the nilatron line. In posterior dislocation of hip also, greater trochanter is proximal to the nilatron line, but in anterior dislocation of hip, greater trochanter is distal to nilatron line. And second one is Schumacher's line. Whenever that particular line is again drawn, then it should cross from the both side. It may cross above the umbilicus or at the umbilicus at the midpoint. Whenever there is any associated fracture or dislocation, then this particular line may meet below the umbilicus. Coming to Sheen's test or Sheen's line, both the anterior superior iliac spine at greater trochanter. When two lines are drawn, both of them will be parallel, but in any fracture or dislocation, this two lines may not be parallel. This is Sheen's line. Coming to the next clinical examination, log roll test in which the patient is in supine position and then passive internal and external rotation 
of lower extremity is done in supine position and knee in completely extended position. Whenever there is clicking or popping sound, it is suggestive of acetabular labral tear and increased ROM when compared to contralateral side, it is suggestive of ligament or capsular laxity. We can check first the normal side by feeling the greater trochanter. Passive internal and external rotation is done in complete extension of knee joint and then the affected side is checked and then we can check whether there is increased range of motion. Coming to the next one, it is stitch field resistor hip flexion test. Resistor hip flexion is done as resistance to SLR straight leg raising. The patient is in supine position and in 30 to 45 degree patients leg is raised actively with complete knee extension. That means flexion of hip in complete extension of knee and ask the patient to do elevation of the affected limb against our resistance. A positive test elicits pain which is suggestive of intra-articular hip pathology that is stitch field resistant hip flexion test. This is, these are some of the basic clinical examination tests which we follow to diagnose the pathology or injury associated with hip. Hope you understood the clinical examination test. Thank you.